What's up, spacers? This is your specialist, the Space Technician, here with the lowdown on the mothership of rockets, SpaceX's bodacious starship. This bad mamma has revolutionized space travel more than sliced bread. And the revolutions and innovations don't stop. I'm talking slashing launch costs by like 90%, monthly Mars payloads 100 times the space stations. True rapid reusability, putting airline turnarounds to shame. Believe the hype, friends. This sucker's our one-way ticket to the cosmic promised land. But achieving stainless steel nirvana took explosive trial and error. So strap in and hang on to your space panties. Today, we retrace Starship's wild ride from sci-fi daydreams on bar napkins to shaking up an entire industry before your very eyes, faster than a Falcon 9 launch sequence. But before we suit up, pound that subscribe button and ring that notification bell to join me on the latest countdown to epic outer space advancements ahead. Come on, I want to see those thumbs smashing buttons for more outside the atmosphere awesomeness. All right, let's get into it. Remember. Strapping in is optional, but recommended. I'm sure many of you are already familiar with SpaceX and their goal of making humanity multi-planetary. But Starship takes that vision and cranks it up to a whole new level. This gigantic, shiny rocket is intended to be the workhorse that enables round-trip cargo flights to Mars, carrying over 100 tons per launch. Just take a second to soak that in over 100 tons per launch. That's equivalent to more cargo capacity than the entire International Space Station. The potential here is just mind-boggling. Now, add in the fact that both Starship's upper stage and its super heavy booster are designed for full reusability, flying frequently back and forth between Earth and Mars. We're talking 10, 20, maybe even 100 flights or more for each vehicle. No other orbital rocket in history comes anywhere close to this kind of envisioned reuse capability. Starship is truly the missing piece required to fulfill Elon Musk's dream of one day establishing a permanent, self-sustaining city on Mars. We're talking about transporting millions of tons of supplies and home-building equipment to the red planet across thousands of launches, and eventually, the first crews of hardy Martian colonists as well. I don't know about you, but that sounds like a heck of an adventure to me. Starship makes this incredible sci-fi future seem almost within reach, transformed from fantasy into a tangible reality in the making. And beyond Mars, Starship could enable all sorts of ambitious new missions, maybe even to places farther out in our solar system. So, in short, Starship's unprecedented size and reusability aims to drop the cost accessing space by orders of magnitude, and in doing so, utterly revolutionize what humanity can achieve amongst the stars. Okay, with that epic vision laid out, now let's get into the rocket nitty-gritty. But first, let's go back to the very beginning of how Elon Musk and SpaceX first dreamed up this wild idea of a fully reusable interplanetary spaceship. Any world-changing technology like Starship doesn't just appear overnight. This was all the way back in the early 2000s when Elon Musk first began dreaming of a giant new rocket he called BFR. That stands for Big F***ing Rocket. Even back then, Elon envisioned a massive, fully reusable vehicle that could fulfill his vision of life spreading to other planets. The BFR would be central to establishing a permanent city on Mars. Over many years, the BFR concept went through countless design iterations and name changes. By 2012, SpaceX officially kicked off development of a flagship rocket bigger than their workhorse Falcon 9S. First, it was called the Mars Colonial Transporter. Pretty self-explanatory, right? But as the capabilities expanded beyond Mars, the Interplanetary Transport System name emerged in 2016. All these early designs involved carbon fiber airframes and were utterly gigantic in scale. 
After even more concept evolution, SpaceX debuted the shiny stainless steel Starship design in 2018 that you see today. Stainless steel offered superior performance in cryogenic environments compared to carbon composites, and it unlocked rapid fabrication techniques to accelerate testing. Which brings us to the trial by fire of Starhopper in 2019. This little flying water tower tested low altitude maneuvering and was a proof of concept for propulsive landing. It only flew to about 500 feet, but it was our first glimpse at the innovation to come. Next up was Starship Mark I, the first full-scale prototype expected to reach high altitudes. But it was destroyed before its first flight during failed pressure testing. So back to the drawing board. SpaceX took all that it learned into SN prototype versions with incremental design tweaks. Several more exploded or crash landed during testing before SM-15 finally stuck the landing in May 2021 an important milestone. Now, after years of applying lessons learned through failure, Starship will soon embark on orbital test flights powered by up to six next-gen Raptor engines. Current specs call for payload capacity exceeding 100 metric tons. Okay, that was just a quick zip through Starship's origin story arc, so we can get to the truly game-changing details. All right, so why is reusability such a huge freaking deal when it comes to revolutionizing access to space? Well, in short, we gotta stop throwing away rockets every launch if we truly want to bring down costs in the long term. Since the early space race, nearly every orbital class rocket like Saturn V, Soyuz, or Ariane 5 has been expendable. Like model rockets, they crash back to Earth or get ditched in the ocean when their fuel runs out. Maybe they light up the sky in a dramatic blaze of glory on the way down. But that spectacle comes at an enormous price per launch. Building new rockets from scratch every time is hard on the wallet, not to mention the environment. Enter the elusive dream of creating reusable human-rated rockets. This has been the holy grail for engineers since practically Apollo 11 left the moon. NASA first envisioned winged flyback boosters for its space shuttle concept before settling on refurbishable solid rocket motors. An awesome idea that got crippled by high turnaround costs and safety issues as we saw. Turns out rapid launch cadence and flight rate is absolutely key to making reusability financially viable. If rockets only launch every few years, it's cheaper to just build expendable ones even if reusable designs exist. SpaceX cracked this nut by designing Falcon 9, and now Starship explicitly for easy reuse from the beginning. We're talking true operational reusability here, more like a commercial airliner than the refurbishment intensive space shuttle orbiters. The goal is to slash operational costs so dramatically that launch frequency can skyrocket. Rather than starting from scratch after each flight, the plan is for starships to land back gently on terra firma or ocean platforms. Quick checkups and inspections would ready them for relaunch in hours or days, rather than months. No need for time-consuming reassembly or refit processes. Now that's real reusability done right. All right, so with that game-changing economic piece covered, Let's geek out on some sweet technical rocket details. Who's ready for some Raptor engines? I know you spacer nerds are hungry for some juicy technical specifics on the Super Heavy Booster and Starship spacecraft. Well, get ready for an epic rocket rundown. First up, we've got the giant Super Heavy First Stage. This beast stands 230 feet tall and generates a spine-tingling 16 million pounds of thrust from 33 methalox hungry Raptor engines. That's enough oomph to put up to 250 tons into low Earth orbit in reusable configuration. For perspective, the Saturn V managed about 310 tons in fully expandable mode, but Super Heavy should launch far more frequently. The key ingredients here are liquid oxygen and methane propellants pumped via revolutionary, full-flow staged combustion cycles in the Raptors. 
Skipping the textbook fluid dynamics lesson, let's just say it keeps the rocket party popping. See, liquid fuel and oxidizers sloshing inside tanks want to do their own thing in zero G. The pump systems working hard to direct and mix those unruly liquids are like frat boys wrangling jello shots at a mixer. It gets messy fast, unless you've got good flow control. That's where Raptor engines achieve max efficiency magic with their full flow staged combustion cycle plumbing. Instead of squirting in propellants to combust, they circulate as hot gases, minimizing turbulence first. Greater stability means more oomph extracted from every drop of rocket sauce to achieve awesome performance. Essentially, it keeps things from getting explosively rowdy inside the engine, so Starship can dance sky high. That grunt then gives the second stage Starship enough velocity to reach destinations like Mars or the Moon. Starship sports six sea level optimized Raptors, along with header tanks and fins for aerodynamic control. Now, here's where the reusability magic happens. Upon return to Earth, four moving wing flaps shift orientation sideways for stable belly flop descent. The engines ignite last second for gentle landings. For ocean splashdowns, the stainless steel construction allows for simpler saltwater refurbishment than heat shields need. And the goal is rapid reuse of both stages, back at base, for insane launch rates. We're talking flight profiles that would seem absurdly ambitious even five years ago, but are now tantalizingly close to reality. Even as the baseline Starship design matures, SpaceX envisions a whole family of variant configurations customized for diverse missions. We're talking the interstellar equivalent of an adaptable pickup truck platform here. See, once launch costs drop low enough, demand for space access will explode exponentially across industries. And a fleet of tailored starships could enable totally new capabilities. Let's start with the massive cargo bay capable of hosting volumes rivaling the ISS. No pesky fairings or custom integration towers required though, just drive a containerized payload straight into the hold and go. It could literally be in a shipping warehouse on Earth last week, getting boosted to orbit next Thursday. And I don't know about you, but I'm itching to book my flight to space camp in Starship once crew rated versions prove out. Vacations to weightlessness 200 miles up? Sign me up now, please! NASA is equally eager to take advantage of this versatile platform. SpaceX already has contracts to customize a Starship variant for crewed Artemis moon landings later this decade. Refilling depots positioned in lunar orbit could give this lunar Starship weeks of surface exploration capability. And while moonshots grab headlines, Global satellite communication constellations closer to home might be early birds harnessing Starship's launch cost savings at scale. We're talking thousands of next-gen broadband birds deployed back to back. This is all only scratching the surface, of course. Our imaginations are the only real limit here. As we covered earlier, establishing a self-sustaining city on Mars has been core to SpaceX's dream since the company's founding and Starship is the critical vehicle to achieve this next frontier. Let's indulge that interplanetary imagination a bit, shall we? Envision bustling colonies of hardy pioneers under shimmering domes on the red planet, made possible by an armada of starships constantly cycling between worlds. Terraforming crews reawakening the frozen carbon dioxide atmosphere into lush gardens under artificial sunlight the first native-born Martian settlers embarking on sprawling surface road trips from their starport homes while Earth shrinks behind the hazy pink horizon until the next launch window. It's a bold vision, though nearer milestones like permanent moon bases could precede the next giant leap our species takes. SpaceX already has its sights set on constructing starship-derived space stations in Earth and lunar orbit as well. The core argument Elon Musk keeps circling back to is ensuring the continuity of human civilization and conscious life in the universe, and scattering our eggs amongst many interplanetary baskets via Starship 
is key to that survival insurance policy. Of course, actually achieving planet-wide influence while preserving astronaut safety will remain a huge challenge for generations to come. Thankfully, we have taken the first bold steps down that road as Starship continues blazing milestone after milestone. So there you have it, folks. The game-changing rocket of the future that will revolutionize access to space as we know it. From Elon Musk's vision to the first test flights, Starship represents an entirely new era for spaceflight defined by complete reusability. I don't know about you, but I am so excited to see how the SpaceX team continues iterating and improving upon Starship in the coming years. And one day, in the not-too-distant future, 100 people at a time may ride one of these rockets to Mars and beyond. Make sure to let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and let your friends know about this channel. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button and ring the bell to stay in the loop on humanity's next giant leap. I can't wait to continue this conversation with all of you space enthusiasts. This is the Space Technician, signing off for now, and I'll see you space cowboys in the next one.